Well, hello, friends, neighbors. John, your Whiskey Neighbor here, and it's another special Tuesday night tonight. I have uh, joining us here on the channel, Matt from Stumbletown Distilling out of Saskatoon. Welcome to the channel, Matt. Hi, John. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. It's always a good night when uh, I can I can open up some new whiskey. We've got a couple of very interesting bottles here and just talk with someone like yourself in the industry. You know, I started this conversation series to find out more what it's like distilling in Canada. And I have already talked to uh, these guys out of Saskatchewan. So I can't say you're the first yeah. Saskatchewan yeah. distiller, Black but I bars. still know very little about it. So why don't you say, like, how did you get into, into whiskey or distilling or, or how, like, like, how is it you and I are talking and we've got some nice bottles beside me? Yeah. Well, uh, so I'm a brewer by trade. I've been brewing for about 10 years, I guess going on 11. And uh, I met Craig, the owner, um, at Summeltown here, and uh, kind of just became friends. And then I got interested in distilling. And during COVID, I ended up hopping on board and started uh, my distilling adventure, if you want to say that. Lots of crossovers uh, with brewing and distilling. But it's still really cool to, to learn something new. Um, so then uh, the whiskeys came in. Craig and his brother had already developed the recipes um, using local Saskatchewan ingredients, trying to focus on that. Um, so the whiskeys that we're about to, to try out are his and his brother's creation. Since then, I've come up with a couple of my own that, as you know, have to wait a little bit before we release them as a whiskey. Um, but yeah, like I said, brewer by trade, and I, I love my whiskeys, so it's very fun to even just try their first ones in the barrel before it was released. That's pretty cool. Uh, so already off the hop, you mentioned um, Saskatchewan grain. Yep. Uh, is that a, a highlight for you guys to try to work with, you know, local farmers or local grains? Uh, how is that to work with the local community? Oh, it's fantastic. I feel like Saskatchewan, very proud people. And obviously our grain industry farming is a huge part of it. Um, so we'd love to highlight local barley, obviously in our beer and in our whiskeys. But then... Um, some very unique whiskeys here, but the very first product uh, Stumbletown ever did was called Purple Wheat Vodka. And so Purple Wheat was actually developed at the University of Saskatchewan here, only grown in Saskatchewan. And we were the first ones to do a vodka with that, that purple wheat. And so it's called that because the, the kernels actually come out um, a purpley red color because of all the anthocyanins in them. So very high in those antioxidants um, used in like foreign markets, uh, like Chinese and stuff for, for pasta and everything like that. Um, but then, yeah, these two whiskeys, we have quinoa and lentil um, grown here in abundance. So Craig and his brother, Kalen, wanted to, to highlight that and show people that um, you can do some really cool stuff with those grains other than just consuming them as food. Very interesting. I kind of tweaked on the antioxidant. So is vodka from purple wheat like like almost a health benefit because of the antioxidants <laughs> i wish i wish <laughs> the, the health benefits of that purple wheat unfortunately do get distilled out if we were to make like an infusion or something like that it might be higher but um yeah it's just kind of one of the catchphrases and buzzwords we like to use but it is the very first vodka that used that purple wheat oh that's some interesting history now you mentioned uh, when we were just kind of saying hello that you're a brewer by trade and, and I know that before we said hi, a couple of minutes ago for the first time, you have shared, and I have since learned, that you won some national recognition for a beer that you uh, put out. Can you just share with us? Uh, yeah, we'll get into whiskey, but talk to us yeah. a bit about this beer and the award. For sure, yeah. So like I said, Brewer by Trade and a really good friend of mine um, and now co-owner uh, with myself, Stephen Meyer. We used to homebrew back together like 12 years ago, worked at the first uh, Saskatchewan craft brewery called uh, Paddockwood. And so we invested and we just started the brewing side about eight months ago. And so to win a, a national award, it was uh, the new beer of the year at the uh, Canadian uh, Brewers Choice Awards. So a national competition and we put in for new beer of the year, new brewer of the year, and we ended up taking home new beer of the year, which is, um, yeah, I, no words, very exciting. That it's our first year obviously like i said not our first year brewing we've been doing it a long time but um just for people to recognize the quality of the product that we put out is very exciting so you can just see it in the little corner here i can i can bring it up really quickly. no you gotta bring it you gotta bring it over yeah i was just yeah. gonna say you, you have to highlight yeah. it so i can recognize it i'll put you on solo here yeah so it's uh the flip side hazy ipa so as a uh, craft beer drinkers probably know this whole new england style is really taking off 
it's a style of IPA that um, is easier for people to get into who don't really like hoppy beers because it's very low on the bitterness. So by adding the hops later in the whirlpool and by cooling down the whirlpool below the isomerization rate of the hops, you get much less bitterness and you retain more of the oils that are inside the hops. And then by dry hopping it later in, in the fermentation stage, you get that big burst of aroma and flavor. Um, so 5.7%. It's got a really hazy, thick body, but it's just very smooth, very juicy. And we wanted to make one that was like not as sweet, still has a bit of dryness, a touch of bitterness, but it's just very, very drinkable. Boy, that sounds really good. And <laughs> no, it, it, like, like now I'm like, oh, yeah, I wish, wish, wish I had one of those around. Yeah. Are they available across the country? Like you won a, a national award, but do I have to drive through to Saskatoon? Yeah. But do, where can I get it? Yeah, unfortunately, just in Saskatchewan right now, we're in oh. all the local liquor stores, but we are moving to Alberta, hopefully within the next couple of months on the spirit side. So we've been doing a lot of work to get a couple of our gins uh, into that market and then beer from there. But since we're so new on the beer side, everything's selling really well in Saskatchewan right now. So maybe with some expansion, we'll we'll get out there soon. <laughs> well, I, I hope they do because that did sound really good. And I know I'm just saying that, but actually... Uh, being able to hear from you, you know, when to put it later. Did you say in the, in the world, I get dry hopping, but did you say yeah. in the, in the, in the, in the world? Whirlpool. Yeah. So it's the very end stage of any boil. You, you okay. cut off the steam or your element, and then you create a vortex, a whirlpool. And uh, in this situation, so there are a lot of beers that have whirlpool hopping and the, the more you add, but it's still sitting at, you know, bo near boiling to near boiling uh, temperatures. So okay. if you cool it down a little bit, our, our, um, we're actually using the, the mash tun that we use for distillation. So we're using a lot of the same equipment we used to distill to brew. We just had to get a couple uh, special pieces for brewing. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's actually steam jacketed and water jacketed. So we can cut off the steam and then we can fill the whole jacket with cold water. Um, so we can cool the entire thing down very quickly from boiling temperature to um, below 85, which is called the isomerization rate of the alpha acids inside of the hop, which creates bitterness. Um, so we still keep it at a sterile temperature, but you get minimal bitterness out of the alpha acids and you retain all those precious oils inside of the hops uh, that you want. Nice. I, I like precious oils. For me, it's usually about non-chill filtered whiskey. Yeah. But why don't we open one of these bottles and, and get into a bit of whiskey? I saw uh, one woman, uh, welcome, has already said what what uh, they have in their glass, which is bare face. Uh, oh, is it seven here? The, no, it's the it's the bare face one with the uh, the mushroom. Um, oh, okay. Uh, what's that mushroom called? Uh, anyways, uh, what's that? Chaga. No, uh, Mats Matsutiki. I'm oh. trying to remember how to say it. But anyways, yeah, that's okay. a weird one. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be weird, but I will say both of these have grains highlighted on them that are a little different. Yeah. Lentil or quinoa, which one should I try to open? I think we'll do the lentil first. Um, the quinoa is a lot more unique, and the quinoa has a bit of roasted malt into it. So I feel like the lentil is okay. a good starting point. Now, you, these are wax covered, and yep. I did in the couple of seconds while we were saying hi, say, I can't. Oh, there it, you it, you're right. Very easy, yeah. I have to take it back. Yep. I literally have my Swiss Army knife here ready to shave off wax <laughs> while I'm trying to get into this bottle. But yeah. this just twisted yep. and opened. Right off, yeah. That's how it be. <laughs> so, yeah, the... Oh, yeah. Um, I actually just want to start out with the color. So the reason that these whiskeys yeah. are a bit darker than most others, we use um, virgin barrels. I mean, the first barrels that Craig and um, his brother Kalen got were actually refurbished barrels from BC. Um, so they took uh, Okanagan wine barrels, um, sanded them down, and recharred and retoast them. So they used um, a quite a heavy char. It's a four char, I believe, which is the highest, and a two toast. So for a three-year-old whiskey, it picked up a lot of color. Um, I think it's, it's a, it's a beautiful color, but in the bottle, just sitting there, it looks quite dark. Yeah. I can, I can say right away, like it stands out as dark. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned it's a number four, that's an alligator char. You're right. Nice. And, yeah. and, uh, and, but then you also toasted it. You said a number two toast. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Now, is that a natural color? Yep. Yeah. No additives in it. Yeah. 
Wow. Um, and is that the only casking, may I ask? Or is there a little bit of wine casking in there? Anything All else going ones, on? It was just in those barrels. Um, I, I was hoping we'd have another bottle of, we did a, a triple barrel whiskey that actually did go into a red wine cask after for about three months. And that one, if you can believe it, is even darker than these ones. Um, yeah, so that was a blend of uh, the very first whiskeys they ever did were quinoa lentil and oat whiskey and then a uh, purple wheat and purple corn whiskey. And the oat and the purple corn, purple wheat got blended and then um, a secondary um, cask sitting in red wine. So unfortunately, we're all out of that one, though. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. That's good. So um, now we, we, we went quick into casking and the color, like you wanted yeah. to talk about the color, uh, which is awesome. But but again, you've you've highlighted that uh, you know lentil, which you know is a grain we're familiar with, but I'm less familiar with it in whiskey. So yeah. can you tell me how you came up with that? And maybe if you're willing, what is it like? Hundred percent lentil? Is it malted lentil? Maybe there might be some supporting grains going on. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about the whiskey. Yeah. So lentil just came about because, uh, like I said, Craig and his brother wanted to highlight Saskatchewan grains, and lentil grows quite abundantly here. So they did some test batches and it came out with a really interesting characteristic to it. Uh, just trying it 100%, uh, almost peppery and spicy like rye, a lot of earthy tones. Um, but just because of uh, calling whiskey a whiskey, it has to be, I believe, at least 90% um, cereal grain. So it is um, the way the workaround is, it's a whiskey base um, using Saskatchewan malt, malted barley, um, some wheat, and then the lentil addition, um, for any additions, if it's in a barrel for two years, then you can add up to nine or 10%, I believe. So it is blended in um, at the time that that is ready um, to this final product here. Okay, interesting. You're using what I usually say is the 909 or the one part to 11% distilled other spirits that you can add and keep it a Canadian whiskey. Yeah interesting yeah. very interesting yeah so that was the, the workaround on that one <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know like i did um i i usually am pretty good with uh, uh whiskey regulations but i wasn't sure the percentage of cereal grain and by that i'm saying i also talked with um shoot um Berwin out of calgary and yeah. like this one the bee whisperer has a portion of distilled honey in it mm -hmm. um and of course, honey's not a cereal grain either. And so they ran into a little bit of what, what you ran into as well. Yeah. I, I think they just released it as a whiskey anyways and didn't care about the 909 rule, but yeah. you guys have stayed within the, the legalities. Yeah. So yeah. this has wheat and uh, malted barley, yep. kind of as I'll call them the supporting cask. Yeah. And then you've added in distilled lentil. Yeah. So 100% lentil base. Yeah. Wow. So the nose, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll, before I say anything, I don't want to cloud your judgment, but I want to see. Oh, yeah, you can cloud away because I'll get it all wrong and you'll go, well, that's interesting, John. But you, what you should be getting is uh, yeah. <laughs> something just, else. Just as a brewer doing samplings and stuff, I, I, I used to start telling people what they smell, but then they'd be like, oh, I do smell that. So, I don't Oh, absolutely. Know. You know, uh, but what, I, what I'm getting right off the nose is, is and now it's already suggestible because you said this word. Uh, but is a little bit of an earthy, but sweetness. You mentioned that it might have some some spicy rye characters, and right yeah. now on the nose, I'm not getting a lot of peppering. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more like a. I, I I'll stick with that. Like like um, not peated earthy. That's far too down that path. But a little bit of um, background earthy groundingness to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then. It's still fairly sweet on the nose, like a sweet, very light toffee or, yeah. um, you know, maybe because I just pulled out a honey distillate, maybe a little bit of honey in there, a little graham cracker, a little malty yeah. sugars in there as well. This is a few of the things that I'm getting. So is any of that ring true? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. We like to tell people um, a lot of maple, almost like maple oatmeal. Um, ah. I, I'm more on the oatmeal than the, than the maple yeah, right now, yeah. but I can get that. Yeah. Even more vanilla. And it is interesting. The more it opens up. Uh, so these are proof, both proofed at 45%. Um, okay. More it opens up, it just continues to change, just breathes off um, some of that, that hot, you know, hot nose out of it. But it's, it's a very, well, very unique whiskey. 
and, 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 you know, um, I, I sample, I drink a fair amount of whiskey. And so I, I, I don't notice the heat as, as much as if I'm drinking with non-whiskey friends. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is still a little youthful now, not youthful, like, um, acetone marker, like, like really offensive youth, Yeah. but still a, a, quite a, a fair amount of alcohol that will probably like I see you're you're swishing hard like, <laughs> yeah. like if I leave this open even just for a few minutes a lot yeah. of those notes will go away yeah definitely yeah I'm just waiting for you to have your first sip so I can have it with oh, you sure well to your health then cheers <laughs> cheers <laughs> Okay, now right away in the palette, that has a um, uh, uh, like a well. I, I'm gonna don't be offended, but a, a little bit of a sweet, like a, almost a lemongrass note to it, like a little bit of a, um, a sweet hay lemongrass. Uh, oh, yeah. It's got a, a little bit of of that uh, kind of that I sometimes get in rice, uh, but yeah. not not menthol dill that I would get in some rice. Not that, but a yeah. little bit of that herbaceous yeah you know. earthy yeah. herbaceous yeah like you said like almost hay kind of thing going on yeah a little bit a little bit but yeah. it is if you have ever just boiled lentils it tastes like boiling lentils smell <laughs> well I, I almost said but then again like like please no offense I, I i almost said like um we've had this split pea soup here every now and then my wife and i make out of a can and I know that's not lentil, but it's close. It's like a yellow pea. And I'm like, I'm getting yeah. a little bit of that in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, <laughs> I get I get some dried fruit, maybe a touch of orange zest to it, um, some stone fruit. But it is, like I said, as it opens up, um, you'll get more of that fruitiness, kind of less of that earthiness. And you do get that vanilla. I guess, like you said, it's not really maple, but that, that toasty uh, vanillin from the barrel. Fair. Uh, where you ended is where I'm more right now. I'm getting a little bit of vanilla oak, like an actual oak presence. And that's maybe the, you get pretty good interaction on a number four char. Yeah. Maybe the toast, um, I could take it into a sweet nut oil a little yeah. bit. Like a, what would be a nice sweet nut? Maybe a little bit of, of almond marzipan, that, that yeah. kind of thing. For sure. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm not. You've told me I'm going to get more fruit, and I will. Uh, <laughs> but right, right now, I'm more uh, earthy. Earthy, yeah. Um, but, but like, but a sweet earthy. It's not. It's not a bitter or a or a, a tannic earthy. It's, it is sweeter. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna that's a good idea. A I brought water to cleanse my palate, but I didn't bring yeah. anything to, to uh, yeah. pour it in. Just to try it out. I'll try it off camera to pour a couple of drops yeah. in and then I'll spill on something over it, here. Yeah, it was interesting. So like I said, I wasn't here for the, the first distillation runs of this whiskey, but I was here for the blending and bottling phase. And so I did try um, blending these two together, the quinoa and the lentil, and it oh, yeah. does make a very, very tasty, unique whiskey. Um, but we decided we wanted to to introduce them both as their, their separate parts because they are so unique. They're so Saskatchewan, you know, the grain base. Um, so then that triple barrel is the one that we ended up blending because that was really tasty blending it um, together as well. Well, it's certainly um, like it's tasty. I, I agree. It's got, the, all, I've been trying to chase down a few notes for people tuning in, but I would also say just as, as one woman poured a, a bit of a mushroom aged uh, whiskey, it is a little unique. Like it, yeah. it, it, it it has the similarities that I've been sharing. In fact, all the notes I've shared have pretty much at some point, except for maybe that split pea soup, yeah. uh, I've shared about other whiskeys, but put together, it has a unique flavor profile. Yeah, for sure. definitely. Yeah. That's cool. Um, uh, and I want to say to anyone here, uh, you know what's in our glass. This is uh, a lentil whiskey from Stumbletown Distilling. Is it distilling or distillery? Distilling distilling out of saskatoon saskatchewan uh we've toasted their uh success in beer and now we're trying the lentil whiskey jump in the comments you guys any questions you have or any uh what are you drinking tonight is always fun to share with those that are gathered now that we've talked lentil whiskey i don't want to rush it but i'm happy to put that aside for a moment and get into this quinoa whiskey i think that's what i have here 
uh, for anyone tuning in. Like this is, again, a very dark. Well, we should mention. I really like your labels. Uh, a fellow you. riding what looks like a moose, maybe coming back from a, a yep. night of party. Yeah. Uh, maybe you'll share a story about the moose. But quinoa whiskey. How did you get into that? So the same thing. Um, they actually, I was talking about the purple wheat that we use in our vodka, and they had tried um, test batches before the distillery is operational, just on their little still of doing a, a quinoa vodka as well, which came out really nice. Uh, they decided to go with the purple wheat just because of the story and because um, purple is Stumbletown's color, so everything in the actual tap room is purple. Uh, we do have the purple moose on the wall. But the quinoa vodka came out really cool, a lot of um, almost like silky vanilla, buttery notes to it, so they decided um, they tried out in the whiskey. And I think there is a distillery, I remember Craig saying this a while ago, can't remember the distillery, but in Quebec that um, had done a quinoa whiskey that went over fairly well that he tried a long time ago and he kind of fell in love with. Wow. Uh, so okay. I don't want to get ahead of you, but I yeah. will say the nose is radically different while the it is, yeah. mental was a little more earthy and a little more like i think i know most of what i'm going on here yeah so i will this say different uh, uh, yeah very very unique it's very good in old fashions but i will say i think i mentioned it before it's got uh, chocolate and roasted barley in in the mash um so that's actually from uh, red shed uh, special, especially maltsters. Oh, I'm hearing more and more about Red Shed and really yeah. appreciating oh, the work that they're what doing. What they do is amazing. Yeah. 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 So same thing. It's got the, I can't remember what you, 909 or what did you say that? Well, it's, it's amazing. the percentage of that. It's one part yeah. for every 11 parts. You right. can have yeah. anything um, that's alcoholic. You can even add wine in Canada. Yeah. Um, in that one part per 11 uh, yeah. whiskey. It started from, uh, I don't know if you know, I, I, sorry to give you it, but for anyone tuning in, oh, yeah. uh, I would say uh, it's it started, the Americans didn't want to take our uh, pure Canadian whiskey and we really wanted to get it south to make a buck. Uh, and they said, okay, well, if you include that one part per 11 of our whiskey, we'll, we'll let, let it happen. And so that was written in the books and that's why we can do that. Yeah. Uh, and it started with just that a one part bourbon for 11 parts Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but now, like, we can add anything. Yeah. Like, we can add uh, wine if we wanted to or, yeah. or, or, or whatever and still call it a whiskey. We don't have to call it a spirit drink or something. Yeah. Well, it is interesting <laughs> that, like, we had to do that because, like, I don't know, like, quinoa and lentil, they're, they're grains. I guess they're not the, the uh, four cereal grains that are or put out in the whiskey Bible or whatever you call it, but regulations. Um, but yeah, so it's got that chocolate note and that comes out really strong in the nose, coffee, chocolate, roastiness. And the quinoa again, gives a very unique earthy, nutty thing going on. Well, I am really liking the roastedness actually yeah. of, um, I've been drinking a, a fair amount of Canadian whiskeys and, and a lot of new ones. And um, there was a distiller a couple of a months back that had this, and they used a chocolate malt from Red Shed as well, oh, a significant cool. portion, and uh, and it came out also like that that chocolate note. And you're right, I'm getting it on the nose. Right now, it's almost a, a, a like that roasted note I'm I'm with. Yeah. But there's also could be just me, and that's fine. We all have our own little quirks. Yeah. But but you didn't mention it. There's a there's an expressive note, like almost almost a floral in the sense of it's it's very it's very expressive. Like it's it it's, is. Yeah. it's not the kind of nose. You know, sometimes I pour a whiskey and I'm trying to nose it and I'm chasing notes. Like oh, now I might be chasing exactly what I'm nosing. Uh, but but it's 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 enveloping. It's 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 a big nose. It is yeah, <laughs> very big nose. <laughs> <laughs> Again, very unique. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, while I'm trying to get my handle around this nose, and I, I do like roasted notes. I love chocolate malts. I, I got a, I don't know why. Uh, I noticed that um, Matt out of the, oh, he's on the West Coast, uh, uh, and he asked, you know, could you give us a bit of an insight into the work, like rough percentages or time? You know what? What uh, he said. I imagine cleaning, uh, but like, what are some of the? You know, when we're making a whiskey, 
describe a bit of that process for us. Like, like where, where do you start? What takes a lot of time? What goes quicker than we think? That kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. And he is right. Like during tours, I like to say it's a very fun job, but 90% of the time I'm a glorified janitor. We clean and clean and clean and clean. I mean, on the brewing side, at least, uh, distilling side is a touch more forgiving. But yeah, everything's got to be clean. Um, in terms of the actual whiskey day, um, mashing in, like so actually converting your sugars, um, getting it up to temperature. We do step mashes on them um, because of the different grains, add some enzymes as well. Um, you can get the, the mash done and uh, into the fermenter. So we, we pitch our yeast on full grain. So we do full grain uh, fermentation and all grain distillation. So we use a slurry pump. So it all gets pumped over. We pitch our yeast and then uh, very different uh, to brewing. So brewing side, you have to be very careful of your yeast and um, everything clean. Um, control your temperatures during fermentation, but for distillation, uh, you use a yeast distiller's yeast that um, you can kind of let go hog wild. So you cap it around like 40 degrees, 30, 30 to 40 degrees, and let it ferment out very rapidly. Um, so then you end up with your your distiller's beer or distiller's brew, um, your your wash, and uh, so that's roughly 10 percent. And then when that's done, that'll take three, maybe four days, two days if it's quick. Uh, then you go into your distillation and uh, a run. I mean, our size, we max out our, our um, big pot still at about 600 liters of mash. Um, then we just go into the distillation phase where we're trying to run it pretty slow. Uh, we have the one whiskey column that has um, four plates to it. And then you go through your fun part of doing your cuts on your heads, hearts and tails. And so every time it's going to be a bit different. Like we don't have all that big fancy equipment. So it's up to the brewer or distiller, sorry, to, to tell when that uh, heads is done and getting into your, your better part of your hearts. And then when yeah. your hearts are done and going into your tails. So that'll be done. Uh, that one run um, will be done, you know, within six to eight hours. And then from there, we just continue doing it. So we have three fermenters. Each fermenter we do two runs on. So it'll be six runs. And, uh, then we'll wind up with probably four barrels worth of whiskey at 65%. Okay. And that's about the strength you, you barrel in at about yeah. 65%. Yeah. Or do you, do you deliberately proof that to end we your will, barrel? Yeah, we'll proof it down. So everything's consistently uh, 65. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I had the good fortune of hanging out with sons of Vancouver out in Vancouver. Uh, they run a pretty small still mm -hmm. kind of a modified, I, you know, pot column, but a lot more column than pot. Um, but uh, they still like, like, I got the taste, like, no, we're not there. No, we're not there. No, we're not there. And then, okay, you know, John, like, try this. And it was like, yeah. whoa, that is, that is, you know, obviously with time, someone like yourself can do that with far more accuracy than someone like myself. But even just if no one here has uh, tasted that, kind of had that opportunity, it yeah. really does shift in taste it does. from that that awful heads uh <laughs> yeah. into that heart that was beautiful yeah i seem to not mind as much as the tails but they were already no we're cutting that out i'm like yeah no oh, this is okay i don't want a little uh oil in my like a feel and they're yeah. like no 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 that's not us we're not doing that <laughs> yeah yeah and again yeah that's kind of the art of it at our scale is that um i mean obviously we don't want any heads and that stuff's useless but putting a tiny bit of tails into, into something or your gin. Um, I mean, A, you get a bit more volume, but we do try and track everything so we're consistent with each product. But it is crazy, especially when we do gins, um, how much that flavor of that distillate changes because of those oils will attach themselves at different points to lighter vapors and heavier vapors coming through with lighter oils, heavier oils. So it's like right at the start, oh, lots of citrus because of the light stuff, all the floral uh, notes. Then you get into your coriander and juniper and that holds all the way through and you can start seeing all the citrus kind of die down. So doing gins, a gin run is really cool to see start to finish all those flavor changes. That might be a good a good thing, even though I, I have to say I'm not a big gin fellow either. I, true, true it for him. I drink whiskey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but just to recognize which oils are, are lingering longer, or what how the flavors changes, even within a a good cut but the different flavors that are in that cut yeah yeah, yeah. ah very cool uh uh seaway asked a little bit about how much volume has been distilled and in storage uh seaway i don't know if you want to qualify but maybe the question is for you you're a small distiller uh do you have 
5,000 barrels in storage or do you have 500 barrels in storage? Like what's the kind of ratio you've got? Yeah, no, right now for just for whiskey, our barrels, oh geez, I could count them. We just got 20 new barrels. And before that, I think they had 10. So we're only working on 30 barrels right now, but we are fairly new. Like the distillery's only been open going on the fifth year. And um, unfortunately, Saskatchewan isn't much of a high end whiskey market. It's more of your, your mixer whiskeys, which is unfortunate. But um, we're really happy and proud to showcase, like I said, the grains and these whiskeys and just show people what what can come from this this land of abundance. No, that's excellent. That's yeah. excellent. We're, we're winning people over to drink better whiskey. I'm, yeah. I'm on that train. <laughs> I, I'm not on the train of of uh, I was just talking to someone today uh, and saying, like, I don't think you got to break the bank, but you, you got to get off the floor. Like yes. when you're on the floor, you're really drinking like high volume fructose corn syrup, whatever. They're just running yeah. it to make alcohol. You've got to get into yeah. something like yourself. You put some craft into this. And even even if this uh, this cool. quinoa isn't exactly your, oh, this is my favorite whiskey, it is unique and it speaks to the work. I got to jump in on this. So cheers to your health, sir. Yeah. <laughs> now this happens. But the roasted notes for me, really strong in the palate. Like, yeah. like roasted, um, you mentioned chocolate, but for me, it is a good 70% cocoa, dark chocolate. Like it's a dark chocolate yeah. and a roasted coffee kind of mixed. In fact, it's almost like sometimes I'm, I, I usually have cream in my coffee, but this is almost like a really good espresso macchiato like it's something chocolatey but but not even heavy cream like it's just very yeah. heavy in that roast it wow. is, yeah. and again it will blow off and, and change as you go and if you add a couple drops of water i feel like the sweetness comes out a bit more um but this one i like to say when we're doing tastings um one person said it to me and maybe i just kind of get out of my head now but it's like a dark chocolate dipped granola bar you get that sweetness from the granola that very distinct flavor the quinoa gives that earthiness as well, but then that really rich chocolate, almost yeah, bordering on coffee, like you said, espresso. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I, yep, I am right there. I, don't, I was trying to add something, and I'm like, no, actually, yeah. that's pretty much what I'm getting. Um, an earthiness again. Actually, I should see how that compares coming back to the lentil, but an earthiness that th this one. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm going somewhere else. I was about to try to get into like some viewers might be more into scotches and that can relate to some peats, but not that. I'm going to take it into um, what I often call it a dirty whiskey or a scotch. And it's something that's a little like worm tub distillation or dunnage warehouse. Or like we talk about those things that give us some earthy qualities. And there's a lot of that in here. I definitely should have brought um, a little bit of like, I'm, I'm going to try to put some water in here in a minute. <laughs> Um, because I'd like to see what is under it a little bit, because yeah. right now it's it's fairly strong in that. And I think some people would say it, it's on the edge of roasted bitterness, like yeah. when you get a, a bitter coffee. Yeah. And I wonder if with a bit of water, I'm going to get some secondary flavors. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, you, you nailed it there. Like, it's it's almost like your tongue wants to taste bitterness, but it doesn't have that same effect on your tongue. So you get that, yeah, like chewing on a coffee bean without any acrid bitterness at all. But it's, yeah, just right on the edge. Yep. Now this one, the, sorry, I'm still in the quinoa. I've got the lentil. I've got yeah. one in each. Uh, but the quinoa over here that I, uh, uh, the casking on that is the same or what's the casking on that? Yeah, same. Yeah. Heavy char light toast. You know, before the quinoa, I'm glad you did this order. I, I would have talked more about that earthiness and, and it is there in the lentil, absolutely. But I'm getting a lot more sweet graham cracker in that as well versus the, the quinoa that is, is is a dark whiskey. And you can't, but color wise, they're they're almost the same color in this light anyways. Yeah. Um, but this, this uh, 
this is where if you're pouring a flight, you would end with this, I yeah. suggest. Uh, certainly, if you were in light ex-bourbon whiskey territory, yeah. uh, it would be hard to recover your palate after this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's why I try. I don't, to mean, that, I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way, Matt. I don't, I'm <laughs> Not at all. No, that's what we do, like in-house, yeah. That's why yeah. I try to do this one second or last in all of our tastings. But, um, yeah, just, again, just that word, very unique. I had never tasted anything like it. And uh, yeah, I am and was a whiskey enthusiast. So yeah, but, yeah, it's a little bit earthiness, like, uh, but it's not. It's it's so far from this. It's not a fair comparison. But um, have you ever had Craig Allocky Thirteen Scotch? They dry that malt over diesel fuel, and it's got a little bit. And I'm not again, like, please don't take these strong notes. It's not like no. Don't worry, are online. It's not yeah. fossil fuel and gasoline. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's got a little bit of that. Uh, funk into it, yeah. uh, which is kind of interesting. Well, I didn't make that face off of thinking that's what I was like. I had never heard of a, a, a concept like that, drying a, a malt over diesel fuel. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 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 a unique one for yeah. sure. Uh, in the comments, uh, Matt said uh, maybe we should have 100% Saskatchewan source potash whiskey. I think he's just uh, going for a lark. It's an April Fool's Day print. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, you know I um, I have an affinity to darker roasts. I have an affinity to chocolate malts, and so this has caught my attention definitely. I, I will say for anyone on, on the channel, uh, buy a bottle, share it with friends, uh, but know that it is a dark and unique roasted experience, very different than a, a light whiskey. Like if you're a, a Irish whiskey fan, this this will not resonate with your taste buds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and usually like i don't i'm not a i'm not on the rocks or even one rocks or half a rocks guy but if if people aren't kind of used to it i will give them yeah a quarter of a, a nice cube just so they can see the experience of it try it right away without it put it in and see how that little bit of dilution changes the flavor as it, it's the, the ice is melting and people i think really appreciate that because it does bring out a lot of the sweetness dulls that roastiness yeah yeah, although I, I like the roast note. Okay, so we've looked at uh, the lentil and then the quinoa. Uh, can you share what might be coming up for you guys? Like what's a, a release that you're willing to talk about or at least hint at yeah. that we could be uh, looking forward to? Yeah, so um, that same vodka, purple wheat. Unfortunately, we might be discontinuing that as a vodka because it's more of a premium vodka. just really hard to get a premium vodka into this market right now. Um, but... I did some testing on some really small barrels um, that um, will age a lot faster because of surface area. And I liked that um, that note that that purple wheat came out again, like very vanilla and silky smooth. Um, so we're going to be doing that as kind of our, our base whiskey. Um, still got a couple, maybe a year and a half, maybe two years on it. Um, a lot lighter char and toast. Um, so like I said, it's going to be more of a, a base. I don't want to say basic whiskey because it's got a lot of really interesting notes to it and then we're going to um mess around with some blendings of some other specialty whiskeys we've done with um a local maltster um in rostered in saskatchewan they're called makers malt they're saskatchewan's first craft maltster so they do some really cool specialty grains um that are in the barrel and we might start messing around with blending some of those very cool Ma makers not makers mark that's a bourbon yeah. <laughs> makers malt Baker's malt. Okay, yeah. that's better. So, yeah. yeah, so Stephen Meyer, um, my good buddy, and who's invested with me now, he actually used to work um, for Makers. So he was a, a maltster. And so he brought um, – so we worked with him on the on the whiskey side and vodka side and everything like that. And he just brings a wealth of knowledge in terms of malted barley um, to our game and improves beers, improves whiskeys, everything like that. So I'm – I will pour whiskey over rocks. Usually the whiskey is over 60 some percent or yeah. something like that. It <laughs> yeah. holds up just fine with a bit of water. Yeah. Um, I, I poured water here uh, in a, not an artful way. And then I had to add more whiskey because it was too much water. Mm. Um, this now with a, with a bit of water on it now, I, I think I've dialed it in a little bit, um, retains a lot of those roasted notes but has sweetened up a little bit. So like yeah. where before I've got 
like you mentioned chewing on coffee beans but not the bitter but like just you're on that edge i was pretty yeah. close to that edge yeah um and and usually water brings out more oak but for me this brought out more of what might be a, a, um, a base whiskey house style that honey graham cracker like a little bit more sweetness that comes up you've mentioned a sweeter granola maybe it's a it's a yeah. granola mix and i wasn't getting that just straight out of the, out yeah. Of the bottle yeah yeah it's a really fun whiskey to play around with like i said it's um the whiskey we use in our old fashioned in house uh we've made our own bitters and um so it works really well in an old fashioned um it's very unique it brings a lot of those chocolate notes to it and it, it kind of blows people away it works really well obviously with the orange peel orange and chocolate mm. classic combination so and 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 now almost the long finish or a little bit on your lips is very chocolatey yeah really chocolatey yeah, yeah. uh you know um matt was talking a bit about uh, red shed and i know they're doing they are doing a peated malt uh one of the fellows i had on here is is doing a, a alberta malt roasted over alberta peat do you have any plans for peat um i don't think so i like myself a good peated whiskey lafroig and stuff like that but um just in terms of this market that we're in like i said um i think it might be a little bit missed <laughs> people might not get it oh come on we're changing hearts and minds we're changing palettes yeah, exactly. that's, that's just, I, I was i was like, literally yeah. in the parking lot yeah. of my workplace today and i'm like you've got to get off the floor yeah. you're gonna have a whiskey here's five to try you gotta yeah. pay a little more but they're worth it yeah. yeah yeah i would love to but in the foreseeable future probably not i mean maybe once we get some more barrels in house but we are tight in here like if i could pick up this desktop and show you with the camera <laughs> especially since we started brewing we've got zero room right now so well but your brewing is 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 well well recognized that's exciting and i'm glad you're you're packed in with barrels um I, is there anything you want to share with the group like you mentioned we've got to drive out to you to buy your beer that's a little bit sad for me but is there anything you want to share with us uh here as we kind of wrap up um i don't know just give us a, a follow on social media we're on uh, instagram uh, check out our website. Um, yeah, and if you're in town, please do come in for a tour. We're always here. And even if we're not open, we'll sell you off sale and try some samples, uh, give you a little tour. Um, I think it's a fantastic spot, a little hidden gem in Saskatoon. During um, the summer, we're about to put out our patio, so we do live tunes, so we showcase live musicians. But, um, yeah, just check out the website. Check out Craig's story, him and his brother's story. is really interesting about the starting of the distillery. Um, and, like, I said i think we do very unique products that showcase the saskatchewan so if you're interested in to see what saskatchewan has in terms of spirits and beer i think we're a really good one-stop shop yeah and and i have been on your website i it's I've got to drop in as i said my, my my daughter's out in winnipeg so there's a chance i'm driving through being out here in edmonton area um but I saw you do have that nice patio. If the weather turns nice, like it looked like a, a good place to drop in and, and enjoy. And if you're not a whiskey fan, although I can't imagine you watching this show and not being <laughs> someone who likes whiskey, uh, you do offer quite a range. So that's pretty yeah. cool. And, and just before we before we sign off, I want to say Nathan and, uh, and One Woman Whiskey, I agree. Uh, there was a fad with whiskey stones for a while. So that means I have bags of whiskey stones, <laughs> uh, of which I am not using ever. Uh, yeah. I have tried them, but uh, but not. Hey, you know, no one asked it here in the chat, but um, some places are able to ship uh, across the country. Yeah. Uh, Alberta is pretty good at shipping anywhere in Canada, but... Like, I don't know, is it tough in Saskatchewan to, I, to ship out of property? used to, like during COVID we did. I don't know if we still do. That's a great question. I should probably know. I'm just not on that end of it. But if you go on our website and if it is still offered on the shop, then we will ship. I know we have previously. Okay. Yeah. Well, but, you can always try. It's, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> exactly. I, I have found legal, clear legal advice has said, actually, we are allowed to in Canada. And then lots of distillers are shipping. And then I've had. I know. Shippers say nope, can't do that. So yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. Don't take my word for it. I'm usually tucked away in the back, making everything. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Matt, it has been an off, an awesome, not awful, an awesome <laughs> evening talking whiskey with you. Hearing about your background in brewing, uh, you might want to hold up your 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 winning uh, hazy uh, IPA. No, yes, yeah. 
Uh, and then uh, I will hold up for those that are, are sticking right to the end. Uh, these deep colored but natural colored uh, lentil and quinoa whiskey. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, same. Thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, pleasure meeting you and having a great chat about whiskey. I always love it. Sure. It's your first chat, so it's all good. You yeah. guys have a good night. That's joined us online. And uh, and we'll see you in the next one, Matt. We'll, we'll talk about your, your next experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Cheers. Cheers.